Welcome aboard, Skylark Outdoors here, and today we've got a treat for you. We are going to take a tour and review the Tiara 38 LS luxury yacht, which we've got right here. So step aboard, and let's take a look at this beautiful vessel. Here you can see you've got a dinette and some seating in the stern, as well as two rear-facing chairs and a fish box right there. And then there's a little grill and a cooler uh, right here in the back of the TR-38 LS. You can see that table can convert or it can be removed completely if you just want to have the open space there. And you can see this one comes in at a whopping 1,040,000 five hundred and forty nine dollars and that is on sale at the 2024 bay harbor boat show so you may see him for more you may see him for less and you can see we just passed on the port side uh, a swing open door so you've got access midships on this uh, vehicle now you've got garmin electronics on this but you could customize it with whatever you want and then up here in the bow we've got almost like a bow rider setup but this is much higher up off the water than a traditional bow rider and you've got plenty of seating up here or space to lay out for I would say at least three people but you could probably fit six to eight if people were just sitting and riding and then you could fit two to three if they were going to lay out on that front chair there. Then at the helm, you've got a beautiful uh, three across here layout, so plenty of uh, space at the helm. You've got footboards, and then these seats also fold up. And that middle seat could actually probably fit two people in it, so it is a lot wider than you think. And just beautiful controls here, simply laid out. You've got the wood inlaid uh, at the uh, controls here, as well as you've got a wood steering wheel just top notch and you can see this one is on a discount of $89,000 which is uh, great if you're looking for a deal on a million dollar plus yacht. You've got the GPS uh, here and all these are touch screen controls so you can customize this uh, with whatever you've got on there in terms of the engine management systems. Um, seat keeper all that stuff you can have that stuff pop up there then here you've got your front berth or forward berth you can see they've just got this one with storage in it because it's at a boat show and hasn't even been used yet so just the typical stuff that comes with a boat and then you've got a beautiful head in here and uh the head you've got your shower and uh, head combined, you can see the showers off to the uh, right there, and then a really nice basin and a fair amount of space there with the mirror, but you do have only one berth in this vessel, so that is one thing to note about this. Plenty of storage up in the front, and then uh, you've got fish boxes and stuff. You can see here's a fish box on the port side, another fish box uh, there in the center, and then... Um, Another fish box uh, on the uh, starboard side as well. So overall, this boat has a lot of space uh, for laying out, entertaining, enjoying uh, the outside on this boat. And then it is also outboard powered, so you could technically use this as a fishing boat. However, you'd have to put your own rod holders in because I do not see any rod holders uh, here at the aft or along the gunnels of the boat. You've got the hard top on here that goes to the outside. You've got the speakers then in the hard top. So one thing that is nice is you've got a lot of shade on this vessel and you can add a uh, retractable top in there if it doesn't come with it. I'm not sure if it has the retractable top as an option or if that's something that you add on. But uh, that's always nice to have some shade on the boat, and uh, you definitely get that with this Tiara. So let's go over some of the specifications of this and uh, my thoughts in general on this. Uh, you've got a 38-foot and 1-inch long vessel. It's got a 3-foot 6 draft, which is pretty good, and then a 12-foot 6 beam, which is larger than most uh, vessels in that 38-foot range. A lot top out at 12 feet, and many are much smaller than that, depending on what you're looking at. But at 12-foot 6, you're going to have a lot of deck space, which you definitely feel that uh, on the boat. And then you're going to have a more stable ride as width goes up. The only downside to that is that you generally then have more width and surface area on the bottom of the hull, uh, which will, and weight as well, which um, 
then will cause you to have a little bit less of fuel economy on this vessel. So this one is outfitted with triple Mercruiser 400s, which is the max horsepower rating for this vessel. Um, uh, 1200 horsepower. You could go for the 300s, but uh, I would definitely go for the um, 400s and the 1200 horsepower total. This thing has a pretty darn fast top speed uh, of 55.6 miles per hour at 6000 RPM. Cruises at 35 miles an hour, 4,000 RPM, burning 40.9 gallons per hour. And then you've got a 331 gallon capacity tank. So this is a vessel that can make some crossings and you've got plenty of space to do that. And I mean, when you think about a top speed of 55.6 miles an hour, in two hours, you can make a 100-mile crossing, which is definitely, that's less than the Bahamas uh, if you're going to from Florida to the Bahamas. And then if you're going further out into the Bahamas, let's say you uh, were on this boat for four hours, that's going to get you 220 miles, which is quite a distance. And for 220 miles, you would have burned about 164 gallons of gas, which isn't bad. So this thing can really go. Uh, you can really get it out there if you wanted to. Now, it isn't a fishing boat. It's a luxury yacht. And uh, that's what you get on this. You're going to have an entertaining vessel. You're going to have a vessel that's going to be stable in uh, heavy seas. And this thing's got the power that it's going to be able to get through the heavy seas no matter but at a 55 mile an hour top speed i think the big thing is when you look at boats like this is that you get ahead of the weather that's what you're trying to do or you get out of the weather or you just wait and uh when you have a 60 mile crossing or 100 mile crossing it only takes you an hour and a half to do that so if you have a vessel like this that has a good top speed like that and is it weighs in at 18,600 pounds so it's going to ride pretty darn well there's no reason to be out in uh, stormy weather with this thing. You've got plenty of speed, plenty of capacity. The whole point is you get out of the weather with something like this, even though it can handle it if you were uh, in that situation. So that would be my recommendation. As always, stay safe, stay out of the weather. And if you have a vessel that's capable of doing that, why get yourself into trouble? There's no point in that. Uh 10 foot four bridge clearance if you live on a canal and you've got bridges, so just something to be aware of. 331 gallon capacity uh, for fuel, 50 gallon water capacity, 27 gallon holding tank, and a 20 degree dead rise. Now this has only one berth on it, and to some people they may think that that is uh, negative. However, if you've owned a boat this size or have a cabin cruiser or even something smaller than that, what you're going to find is very rarely, if you have two cabins, are you going to have both cabins occupied. Reality is, on a boat, uh, even one that's got two cabins, they start to feel very small after a couple of days. And you have to really like the other people uh, that are going to be in the cabin with you. So that's really up to you if you want a single cabin or a dual cabin boat. If you've got just a single cabin boat, then you don't need to worry about it. You don't have uh, anyone else on there other than yourself, and uh, it works out. If you've got a dual cabin boat, then you just got to be aware. There could be a mutiny on the Tiara 38LS. They eliminate that with that second cabin, so you don't have any mutinies on your vessel. Just something to be aware of, and I think that unless you've been in a boat like this or gone on trips with... Um, a dual cabin or triple cabin vessel, I think if you talk to a lot of people, what you're going to find is that those dual cabins and triple cabins never really get used. They just take up space, where in reality, the space that will get used the most is the outdoor space. Most likely use case for something like this is that you're going to take your friends out. You're going to have a beautiful evening cruise, a day cruise, go to the sandbar, enjoy swimming around, maybe tow somebody around on a tube. I guess you, you've got enough power. You could water ski behind this thing. You could wakeboard behind it. It probably throws a huge wake uh, with 1,200 horsepower and 18,000 pounds, but you certainly could do that if you wanted. And I think just knowing the use cases, 
of what you're going to use a boat for is important when looking at them. So this thing, the pros are it's fast. It's got a beautiful layout, a beautiful deck layout for entertaining outside. A lot of space in the rear here, a lot of space in the front, plenty of shade. And then it's a tiara, so well-made boats, nice boats. A um, lot of history there in terms of what these vessels are capable of. And then there's a lot of touches that you probably won't even recognize until you actually get in this vessel and you start to see it. And you're like, wow, that's, that's really nice. There's only so much that we can cover uh, when we do a video and the time that we have on these boats. But overall, high quality boat build, uh, beautiful vessel. And uh, it does actually have a fish option if you wanted to... Um, get this outfitted. It's just an option that you have to add. And then what they do is they can put outriggers on the top there, and then you can have the uh, also some rod holders on the top, and then they can put rod holders on the rear behind uh, that seating that you've got. And then they can actually, instead of uh, having that big seating where you've got uh, the table, they will give you a live well. Now, I really like that rear seat that they've got on this vessel. So I would maybe try and fit in a live well somewhere else. Uh, unless you're a serious fisherman and you want to do it all the time, I would probably try and convert somewhere else in the boat or have like a live well that's even maybe aft of that seating and kind of on that swim platform, give up a little bit of space there rather than uh, go with a fish package where they eliminate that um rear uh seating with the table i really like the rear seating on this thing it's beautiful for entertaining it would probably feel really nice and uh you can sit out there envision yourself having a sunset cruise with uh your significant other your friends your family uh or whoever you want to have on this boat and probably would be really nice with that rear seat very comfortable so uh, hope you enjoyed this review of the Tiara 38 LS Luxury Yacht, clocking in just at a little over a million dollars. I hope you enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, please uh, leave those in the comments below. And we hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time.